Welcome to our Getting Started videos for Akitsu. This tutorial series is intended to give you a tour of Akitsu and to gain a better understanding of the program so you can locate the tools that you'll need for each one of your projects. We'll start by covering the UI basics. Akitsu is a rigging and 3D animation tool set made by animators for animators with a very accessible and intuitive interface. One of its distinctive features is that you can easily switch to and from the rigging and animation modes in Akitsu. Click on the keyframe in the lower right hand corner of the screen to access the rigging window. In this mode you'll be building your skeleton, binding skin, and using skin painting tools to adjust the influences relative to your mesh. You'll also be able to place additional controllers for your characters, such as IK controllers or additional bones. Switching back to the animation mode by clicking on the same button, which is now turned into a hammer and bones icon, you'll notice that it switches back to the key icon, denoting that you are now in the animation component of the software. This mode you'll be creating keyframes and posing your character to create your animations. Going back and forth between both modes can be done at any time and it gets you preserves as much as it can from your animation when you edit the rig. It's especially true when you need to alter joint orientations to ease your workflow. Akitsu keeps it so simple you can learn through practice what suits you best. You'll notice that there are other icons in each corner of the screens. These respectively let you access the file menu and export options and the preferences menu in the lower left hand corner. These will all be covered later in this video. Before we do that, let's take a look at the welcome menu where you'll be able to find links to Akitsu's learning resources. You'll also find there are quick access links to the demo characters. But you can access the Akitsu manual online. You can also find additional video tutorials, visit the forum and bug reporting sites, or go directly to the home page of our website. The three characters down here will help you better learn Akitsu. The Ake Boy shows you the recommended pose based philosophy for creating animations in Akitsu. Elise embeds the basic cycles for integration in game engines. Finally, the Sky Surfer shows you how blend shapes can be loaded and animated in Akitsu. You can import other scenes from the file menu. For now, Akitsu supports OBJ and FBX at import. Other formats will be supported in the future. Creating new scenes, like so, is as easy as clicking on the new scene file. From here, you can load in additional objects using the import option. Akitsu keeps a running list of the open files in the background, and it's easy to switch between them by clicking on the tab associated with the file. Saving your scenes in the AKT format, which is Akitsu's proprietary format, is as easy as clicking Save Scene or Save Scene As. This will open a file system dialog allowing you to give a custom name to your file. Please note that you can also export animations as AKNM from the character bank window here and using each one of these buttons up top to export the animation into a separate file. This file can then be loaded into other characters in additional scenes, thereby importing the animation that you just exported. We won't go into too much detail here. When you're done, export your file as an FBX for integration in your game engine or rendering software. There are a couple of options here that can come in handy to export selected animations only. 
By default, all Anim takes will be included in the scene export so they can be easily transferred over. Akitsu's philosophy for navigation is to be as simple as possible. This is done easily by left clicking in the mouse and rotating it around your view. No need to hold the modifier key to do this. By middle clicking and dragging, this allows you to pan the character. Right clicking and dragging will zoom your character in and out. Your character will automatically zoom in and rotate around the selected object, easily focusing your animation to the parts and modifying what matters most to you. When in weight painting mode, you'll notice that you have a paint cursor and you can no longer just click and drag as this will paint additional weights on your character. To facilitate navigation, a single hotkey is used by pressing the V key and holding down the right, left, or middle click buttons. You can pan, zoom, and rotate your character accordingly. In terms of panel options, it's easy to reorganize your workspace how you see fit. Panels can be undocked and docked simply by dragging a panel underneath another one. By using the three dots, you can expand the window, additionally pushing the bottom windows down. By going into the Options menu, Preferences, you can scroll down to the tree preferences and dictate a hovering size. This will take the tree and expand it to whatever size you choose. If you wish to keep the tree always open in a frozen state, it will expand to accommodate your request. Additionally, accessing the Preferences menu is not only through the bottom left hand corner here, but on each of the tools respective to their component. In this case, if I want to adjust the properties of the spinner, I can simply click on the gear icon and it will directly take me to the preferences relating to the spinner. Additionally, if I click on the Transform, it will take me to the transform options as well. This gives you an easy way to always change the preferences to suit your specific needs at any moment. You can also click on the question mark button, which will open up a web browser and direct you to the dedicated section in the Akitsu manual for that tool set. Akitsu gives you an easy way to switch between different viewing modes. These modes can be found in the Preferences menu at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen under the Shadings section. You can choose between Textured and Mesh View, Wireframe, or Textured Mesh over Wireframe View. Each of these views are identical no matter what section of the tool you are available in, whether it's rigging or animation. Additionally, since Akitsu operates on a bone-based hierarchy, you can show or hide those bones using the decorators here. Both of these areas can be accessed by hotkeys for shading menu by pressing 1 for, for wireframe, 2 for mesh, and 3 for wireframe over mesh. Additionally, to show or hide your decorators, you can show bones by pressing 4, hide the connections between the bones by pressing 5, and showing pivots. These are all toggled buttons and can be pressed to enable or disable their separate components. Selecting things in a kitsu is as easy as clicking on them if you're in the bone view. Or for a cleaner workspace, you can hide all your bones 
and do what is commonly known as proxy picking by selecting the region you wish to edit and manipulate. Akitsu also has a variety of different views to help aid in your animation and rigging workflows. In the Preferences menu, these are Perspective Front, Back, Right, Left, Top, and Bottom, and can be also accessed by pressing the 1, 2, 3, all the way through 6 keys. Akitsu not only provides the standard perspective layout with an additional curve board by pressing the space bar, but you can choose additional layouts such as a picture-in-picture -picture view. To change the view of the picture view or the view you're working in, simply click on the view and either change it through the preferences menu or pressing the keyboard command you wish to change the view to. Additionally, Akitsu comes with a four view layout and a two view layout with the curve view on the bottom. As always, you can access the help menu by going to a panel and clicking on the question mark button to quickly bring up the Akitsu documentation and explain what you need help with. Finally, Akitsu offers customization options to brighten up your workspace and make specific elements pop out. In this case, I can take the joints that you see here, go into the Preferences menu, and under the Color section, I can change their color to something that might be more easier to read against the mesh that I'm displaying. At any time, I can reset the color simply by pressing this button. Additionally, my viewport background can be also set in the same manner, and I can also choose a gradient color, which can sometimes make the character stand out from the background and make it easier to animate with. Akitsu always has the ability to go from panel to preferences with the click of a button and to the documentation. That's it for this introduction to Akitsu's UI. Next we'll take a tour of our rigging mode and all the tools it offers. Meanwhile don't hesitate to click the links in the video description if you want to hit us up on our discord service or write us on our forums.